According to the sacred writings of the Christian faith, God created the world, and everything God made was good. Hard to believe when we look around us, and there's a story about that. God made us in His image, meaning His character, to reflect Him in a special way that no other creature can. And there's a story about that, too. See, the enemy of God had accused him of selfishness. God created us to witness against that charge as we lived in selfless love to one another. Since God is relational, so are we. According to how He designed us to love and be loved, we function best in self-giving relationship. God created us for that. But as the story unfolds, sin, which is basically selfishness, invaded human nature. Now we're bent toward self and away from love. The entire storyline of the Bible basically shows God frantically dealing with the fallout of His creation becoming selfish. Why is God concerned about that? Well, because selfishness, which appears to be self-preservation, is actually self-destruction. And God wants us to live. In our blindness to the big picture, we destroy ourselves and others. In the process of saving us from self-destruction, God mentions a number of rules and commandments designed to educate us as to what healthy love looks like. The law, as it's called, isn't just a set of rules, though. It's a document that shows how life and love really work. Some of those laws address human sexuality. It's funny, if you just read certain of these laws, God almost seems like a prude with very little appreciation of sexual pleasure. He seems to abhor sex, but nothing could be further from the truth. Looking at the big picture, we see that God made love. He made sexual love, and He made it to minister to our pleasure, our joy, our health of body, mind, and spirit. When we abused His gift through sin, He didn't destroy us. He redeemed humanity. In fact, that redemption took the form of God unselfishly pouring out His life to save us. So all those rules, they were made not only by a designer who knows how we work, but a redeemer who would give up his own life to give us back ours. My point is that those rules must be kinder than they seem. They're like a barbed wire fence in front of a hidden drop-off. They look rough, mean, and nasty, but actually they keep us from death. In fact, rather than abhorring sex, God regards it as a fitting symbol of His own love for us. Because in sexual intimacy, there is a pouring out from one to another, which symbolizes God pouring out His own life for every human being. In this series, God Made Love, I'll be looking at God's design for human sexuality, identifying aspects of God's creation and showing how deviations from that design can bring consequences. My purpose isn't to push my religion on anyone or to judge or condemn, but rather to give food for thought and to present a way of life and love that, in my experience and the experience of many, works. I thought about presenting only science in these talks so that people wouldn't think I was preaching. But science, for all its wonders and greatness, can't possibly give an objective and comprehensive picture. In fact, as much effort as is put into making the scientific method fact-based, the process can still be driven by opinion, by politics, and basically by what people want to believe instead of what's true. At every step of the scientific method, hypothesis formation, fundraising, testing the hypothesis, data gathering, and interpretation of data, human subjectivity can color the results. I mean, most scientific research is done in the West, in wealthier societies. That in and of itself precludes objectivity about human life globally. So while science can sometimes give us a clear, sparkling window into truth, it comes from broken, flawed human beings, and it's limited in what it can convey. My heart craves a source of objective truth for everyone not just Westerners. As someone who has come to believe in the inspiration of what we call the Bible, I'm coming from the premise that it gives a divinely inspired picture of truth. In fact, the Bible itself says that through God's divine power, the scripture gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Happiness on earth 
and preparation for an eternity of happiness. That's a bold claim, but a claim much life experience and sometimes scientific research validates. So I'm being upfront with you saying that even though I respect and use science, the principles guiding my search of human sexuality are from the Bible. Whether you share this belief or not, I think you'll see a viable, beautiful, and inspiring way of approaching this hot topic. So what about all those rules in the Bible? Sexual passion is like fire. We need it to live, but out of control, it kills. Just as the fire of the sun warms our planet and grows our food, sex propagates the human race. The Shaker religion died off because of celibacy, and so would the human race without this wonder of procreation. But also like, like fire, that very thing that brings life when kept within boundaries kills when outside of them. If the sun were closer to the earth, it would throw the ecosphere into a chaos and we'd all die. A fireplace in the hearth warms the home, but a stray spark catches a curtain and causes a house fire. Well, you get my point that sexual passion outside of boundaries kills. 35 million people have died of AIDS globally since the beginning of the epidemic, most of it communicated through sex outside of God's plan. And that's just one disease. Some see biblical restraints as antiquated artificial rules designed to keep an authoritarian order. I don't see them that way. As I contemplate the Bible's view of sexuality, a picture of a loving father emerges. A father who cares enough about his kids to offend them sometimes. A father who is taller and more experienced and sees what's up ahead. In other words, a father we can trust. In these talks, I will zero in on specific aspects of God's design for sexuality. I'll first share the original design, then the ways in which we deviate from it, and for those who want it, help getting back to the original. I'll try to be balanced and fair in my approach, not singling out certain issues while ignoring others. I've been blessed in following this plan, and I'd like to share with you how God made love, the design, departure, and redemption of human sexuality.